Hi there, I'm Sam, Certus' new content manager. You'll be seeing a lot more of me in these videos discussing a wide range of topics around smoke ventilation. Have no fear though, Carlson's Two Minute Tuesdays are here to stay. Not only am I new to Certus, but also to smoke ventilation systems as a whole, so I thought it'd be a good idea to tell you some of the most common terms you might hear when speaking to smoke ventilation experts. I'll also have a go at explaining what they all mean as well. So, let's start with a component you get in many smoke ventilation systems. These are dampers. Now, dampers are a key element in all smoke ventilation systems with shafts, particularly in mechanical smoke ventilation systems. The basic purpose of dampers is to allow products of combustion, smoke and fire, into a shaft on the fire floor, but stay shut on all the remaining floors, so the smoke can't escape from the shaft. For example, let's say we have a fire on the third floor of a six-storey building. In one of our mechanical systems, there'd be a damper on each of those six floors connected to a smoke shaft running up the building. The idea here is the third floor fire would occur, and the only damper in that building to open would be one on the fire floor. That way, the smoke vents through the damper, into the smoke shaft, and out the top of that shaft. But how did only the third floor damper know to open? Well, this brings me on to my second technical term, which is cause and effect. Now, cause and effect is absolutely crucial, as you can have the most perfectly designed system in the most perfectly designed building, but if the system is set up incorrectly, then it's all effectively worthless. As mentioned in the damper example previously, with a correct cause and effect, the fire will be detected on a specific floor and only the damper on that floor will open. If the cause and effect was wrong, there's a possibility other dampers connected to the smoke shaft would open, and instead of the products of combustion being filtered out of the building, they'd fill other floors, putting lives at risk. Moving on now to a term that's mentioned a fair amount in our CPDs, negative discharge. This, quite simply, is when natural air pressure on the outside of a building pushes smoke back down a vent. An example of negative discharge in action would be if there was a fire in a residential building, a single leaf roof vent opened up to a 90 degree angle to let the smoke out, but a gust of wind came across the building, hit that vent and ended up pushing the smoke back in. That's the reason vents have to open to 140 degrees by law. With the vent being open much wider, the wind scoops over it instead of hitting the vent with force, and the air is still able to be released from the building. At Certus, we've found opening the vent to 160 degrees is even more effective, so our vents open that little bit further. The actuators on our single leaf roof vents, for example, open the unit to 160 degrees in just 60 seconds. If you're a newcomer to smoke ventilation jargon, your head may well be teeming with information at this point. So the final thing I'd like to mention in this video is pressure differential. This is a term that you will be hearing a lot when discussing, you guessed it, pressure differential systems. And the most common system falling under that bracket, pressurization systems. Pressure differential is basically the difference in pressure between two given points. So in a pressurization system, if there were to be a fire in an apartment, for example, We'd pump air to raise the pressure in zones like a stair core, a firefighting lobby, or firefighting lift in order to keep any smoke out of them, keeping them clear for the eventual evacuation of the building. However, we'd have to keep the fire zones close to atmospheric pressure. Because the zones have different pressures, this would be the achievement of pressure differential. Now, that's an extremely basic overview, and pressurization systems are quite complex, so if you'd like a broader overview of these, I'll add a link below to a more in-depth video of ours. If you're watching on YouTube, you should see a card somewhere up there. And that brings me to the end of this video, because there are so many of these terms to go through, I'll be posting a part two to this very soon. If you'd like to tackle some more of this jargon with me, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Please also give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and feel free to comment below any areas of smoke ventilation you'd like explaining further. Thanks for watching and bye for now.